Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life and welcome to the very first video on this channel for the year 2022 and I thought what better way to start the year by showcasing a really awesome product. This is the Eclipse Clicker by KAP. This is my very first product review of an item from KAP, Kinetics Asia Pacific. But this is extra special because it is a collaboration between KAP and Umbari. That's right guys, Umbari. Now, this right here is a clicker as you can see. It is a very straightforward kind of operation and is super fun. And before I get too far ahead of myself because you guys basically saw the main function of the Eclipse, there are a few credits to be given out. So first of all, a huge, huge thank you to KAP, Kinetics Asia Pacific, and of course to Haisia for sending this my way, putting this in my hands. And also I would like to extend a message of gratitude to Anna of Unquiet Hands. Yes, thank you Anna. This would not have been possible without your recommendation of me to Haisia, so I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to try my best to structure this video and I will be putting some timestamps below. Just a heads up, there will be a full disassembly of the Eclipse because I really want to show to you guys how amazing the machining is on this little piece here. My goodness, it's so good. But let's start things off by showing you the main function of it. And that is all in the name of the product. It is called the Eclipse Clicker. You guys already saw me kind of flicking it. That's the main function here. It is a clicker, a fidget toy, like I mentioned to you guys before. But there are many ways to click this thing or to fidget with this thing. And the most common way that I realize I fidget with this thing is in this particular orientation with the pivot facing the front away from your hand. And then I'm using my index finger to kind of pull back, like flipping a switch. Of course, if I flick it really hard, then it goes over. But if I apply the right amount of pressure or the right amount of force, it just stops just like that. Of course, you can hold it in different orientations, like for example, this way, because gravity plays a part as well. But yeah, this is the main way I found myself fidgeting with this. However, you could change it up to a index finger and thumb grip and then pull back with your middle finger. For those of you who really like pulls on your spinners, for example, this is really cool as well. It's kind of reminiscent of a snap just without using your thumb. Another way actually is not to let this thing go all the way, but to kind of block it then you can flick it back. That's another way to fidget with this. And of course, the reverse is also possible instead of letting it go all the way like that. Now, another way is to flip it around completely and you could flick forwards with your index finger, just like so. I'm not very proficient at this. As you guys can see, I am struggling a little bit. Oh, there we go. So that's a little bit better. And then you could do the same with the middle finger just by swapping your grip and then flicking forward. So that's four main ways of fidgeting with this, but there are also other interesting ways like using it as a normal clicker, like holding it like this, or doing it the reverse way, just like that. You could also kind of hold it this way and then fidget like a jib jab style. So there's so many ways of fidgeting with this Eclipse clicker and this thing is just mad fun. It's not too loud as well. Not as loud as some other clickers. For example, uh, I know that a lot of people have mentioned that the Unquiet Hands rocker clicker is really loud. Let me just bring the rocker clicker in. So I have the rocker clicker right here. I'm going to use a single click and the microphone is actually in this corner up here, but I'm going to hold it this far away so that you guys can kind of get an idea of how it sounds like. So. That's the rocker clicker and that's the Eclipse once again. So yeah, hopefully that gives you a good estimation or a good idea of the difference in sound and the volume. The Eclipse produces a click but not as high pitched as most other clickers that I've tried before. And it does have a slight dual sound rattle because there are two magnets in there. So they kind of click twice. First time, second time. So there's one sound when it leaves, or I should say two really quick sound when it leaves and it rotates. And when it completes the rotation, it produces another two really quick clicks. That basically is the sound profile of this Eclipse Clicker. Now let's talk about the aesthetics of this, the way it looks before I get into the construction of it all. So first of all, the Eclipse looks like this. It's two parts basically. One is the outer 
clamp, I would call it a clamp, and the inner disc. Now this disc spins around and swivels along this particular pivot here. And this version that I have in hand is the titanium version. So this is solid titanium, except I believe, I may be wrong here, except for the pivot pin. Now the pivot pins here, they are very reminiscent of knife pivot pins and they are Torx screws. So yeah, you'll need a Torx bit if you want to disassemble it. I will get to that in a short while. But overall, as you can see, it is all titanium with the very nice pop of blue. And the blue here on the pivot pins are really, really well anodized. The color is really vibrant and it is very, very even. Now I'm going to start disassembling this because I really want to geek out about the machining quality of these guys. Because I feel that the best way to showcase the machining prowess of KAP and Umbery is to disassemble this thing and show everything to you guys. And I'm going to do so by using a couple of Torx screwdrivers as well as a hex key. And I've got a silicone tray here, courtesy of my friends, Ting Si, CK and Samson. Thank you guys so much. You guys also gave me this really, really cool screwdriver. Uh, I really appreciate it guys. You guys are so awesome. So anyway, first of all, you'll need these tools. And I'm using this because I don't want to scratch up the wood surface here. And last but not least, we need a companion and it is Yuki. We've got a new Yuki in the house, everyone. And Yuki is going to just sit right here in the corner to kind of watch over what we're doing. Now, like I mentioned, you need some tools. And here I actually have two Torx screwdrivers, but you don't actually need two. Now, I want to mention that this actually takes T8 Torx bits. So make sure you got T8 Torx bits ready to go. Oh, let me just show it to you the other way. Can you even see it? I do not know. But these are T8 Torx bits. And you will need a small hex key. And I think that this hex key is a 1.5M hex key, if even that's a thing. Because I don't know, I just measured it, guys. It's like about 1 millimeter to 1.5 millimeter wide. So I'm just guessing it is a 1.5M hex bit. So yeah, you'll need those kind of tools. Now, the good thing about the pivot pin is that it is not glued in. There is no Loctite or whatsoever so you're not going to have to worry about having to use a lot of pressure to undo it. However, it is a free spinning pivot pin. Let me just show you as I rotate the screwdriver, you could see that the pivot pin is also rotating. Now, if you only have access to one T8 Torx screwdriver or a screw bit, basically what you want to do is just grab a rubber band and apply some pressure on one side with the rubber band. So that applies a pretty good grip on one side and then just undo the other. But for convenience and because I actually have access to two Torx screwdrivers, I will just use what I have. So one side is going to provide the torque or the grip and then I'll just undo it with the other. So there we go. And then the pivot pin just falls out like that. And let me show you the pivot screw. Now this pivot screw is very reminiscent of some knife pivot screws. I don't know the exact brand, but yeah, it's very reminiscent of that. However, on the underside, there is a really, really small O-ring. Let me try and get that out. There is a super small O-ring here on one side or basically underneath each side of the pivot. And that provides the grip that you need. So you don't have to worry about any Loctite at all. There is none in there, no thread locker whatsoever. If you could even see what's in there, if I could get the light to shine properly, it is really clean. So now what I'd like to do is just put that one screw aside. Now I'm gonna lift up and fillet the two halves apart. And you will see that there are a couple of other pins here. So let me just take the pin out. These are the aligning pins or the alignment pins. And I believe that these pins are custom made. As you can see, one side is flat, but one side is nicely stepped. And that is what leads me to think that these have been custom machined. And they sit in these two respective slots on the outside. And the inner slots are, of course, for the magnets there. All right, so I'm going to remove these because I want to talk about each half of the main clamp area. Now, these are amazingly finished. Look at the machining work on this. Every single edge is nicely rounded, nicely chamfered. Even the sharp edges here are nicely deburred. You're not going to find a single sharp corner or any sharp surfaces that will bite you at all. That is really, really amazing. Now look at this solid one piece, right? Look at it all around. And all the cutout slots here are all done perfectly, right? The alignment's really, really good. And if you check out the top here, you'll see the nice machining mark. These are all deliberate concentric triangular designs here, or I should say the kind of dog bone or bow tie design. And even in there, that slot where the pivot screws go, that is also finished very, very well. Overall, this seems like a very, very fine stone washed finish. I don't know the exact mode of finishing this is done in, but it is not a bead blast finish. It's very, very smooth and it leaves every single 
edge every single step every single texture feeling really really good i was super super shocked at the quality of machining that i really had to show it to you guys so this is just one half of it i'm going to put this here now what we can do is lift up the main disc area and you'll see that the two magnets are kind of attached here to another bigger magnet in there so i'm going to remove the magnets one by one and word of advice i suggest that you put all the magnets kind of together on one side like that so that they don't start to attract them to the pivot pins and maybe even for example this see yeah so so yeah take note of that try and keep everything separate you also don't want a magnet to kind of accidentally scratch one of the surfaces here so let's put this aside here and look at the other half as you can tell both halves are made the same they mirror each other and on top of that even the finishing the quality is mirrored as well this is just beyond amazing guys look at that awesome beautiful quality great finish there's no cheapening out on any of these at all so like i said these are actually held in via the magnets as well as the stopper pins these stopper pins that go into these slots so they will sit just like that right so i'm going to put these two aside here now we're going to take a look at the main spinning disc area and on this side it is really clean no other slots besides this particular cutout for the r 188 bearing and this is a steel cage r188 bearing but if you flip it over you'll see that that is where the two hex screws reside and these are the hex screws that are holding these two halves together so you're going to get your hex bit your hex driver or your hex key and you'll see it's starting to get attracted to the middle because this is being attracted by the magnet in there so just be careful when you're doing that you don't want to kind of accidentally slip and scratch the surface by accident so just exercise some precaution and remove the two hex screws carefully that's the first one here we go the second one put all the screws aside and i'm going to put the hex key aside as well and now i'm going to lift up these two halves and you will see that there is a bigger magnet sitting in here and it's attracting the bearing of course i'll put the magnets all together just like that and we have a steel cage r188 bearing guys it's dry so you can hear the grittiness when it spins and i like the gritty sound but if you guys want to you could of course change this out to another r188 bearing but i feel that in this particular application this bearing works perfectly fine i'm going to put the bearing aside and let's check out the two halves of the main disc area they look like they mirror each other but they don't because you guys already saw on the flip side one side is clean and the other side has the slots for the hex screws right there and these slots are countersunk perfectly so that your hex screws will sit in there completely flush and i mean it guys it's completely flush it's just amazing what they've done now the next thing i want to call out is that i love how precise the bearing cutout is done the bearing will sit in this slot right there but if you look at it from the other side you don't actually see the outer race of the bearing at all it's just perfect it's the same exact width as the outer race of the bearing that is just amazing guys like look at that that's so well done and of course in order for everything to be held together by those hex screws these parts have been tapped very nicely and they're super clean tapping and just like the outer clamp pieces the disc pieces are also finished very very well even these areas here are not sharp at all whatsoever you've got a couple of lightning slots cut out here as well because you want this to be as light as possible so it could spin around nicely but what i found the most amazing the thing that really caught me off guard the most is that this pattern here is not a simple concentric circle guys this is actually a single spiral pattern i'm gonna try and get the light reflection to show you guys but it is a single spiral pattern and you can tell simply by looking right in the middle you'll see that it starts from just one point and it spirals around how amazing is that same thing goes for the other half the machining quality on just this particular clicker the eclipse clicker this is just amazing and i am truly blown away now i'm going to reassemble it and reassembling it takes a little bit of coaxing here and there but there is an easy way i found to reassemble everything so i'm going to kind of show it to you guys if you're not interested in this part please go ahead and skip it but we will start by focusing on the disc first okay because you'll need the disc in order to help you align two smaller magnets and i'm starting by grabbing the solid half of the disc because i'm going to kind of cover the top part and then screw everything down from the top so grab your bearing seat it in place and you want to kind of hold the bearing down in place like that while you put the magnet 
on. And when you get everything seated right, you have the magnet being seated in slot, but being attracted towards the bearing. And when that's done, just grab the other half and make sure the alignment is correct. And then you're gonna place everything down like that. Then grab the screws and kind of seat them in place. And then get your hex driver. Take some precaution. Don't let this accidentally slip up because of the magnet and scratch the surface here. Just exercise some precaution and slowly tighten it bit by bit. So that is the disc being fully reassembled. Now we are going to reassemble the clamp area. Now the first order of things here for the reassembly of the clamp area is to grab your pivot pin. I'm going to set the disc part aside. Now whichever half is fine because they are mirrors of each other. So grab the pivot pin and slot it in just like that. You could rest it on a surface or you could hold it in your hand. It's completely up to you. Then you want to grab these guys over here, the stoppers or the alignment pins, I should say, not stoppers, because I'm thinking in knife terms. Sorry, guys. And just kind of insert them into the respective slot, just like that. Now, you need to align these two magnets and make sure that they sit in those two slots. But if you try it just by placing the magnets there, they are going to snap to each other, all right? So what you want to do then is to first grab just one of the magnets. Then what you want to do is to use the main magnet here on the disc and try and get this to be attracted to that magnet first, just like that. If it is the wrong polarity, you will know because they will start to repel each other. Just get the right polarity and it will be attracted this way. Then you want to make sure that it is aligned on one end of that cutout slot because you guys can see that slot there, right there. So just do that. Now grab the other small magnet and do the same. Make sure that the polarity is correct. And if it is attracting the smaller magnet, that's not the correct polarity. So what you want to do is flip it over and get it attracted to the main magnet. And it should look something like this. So what's happening here is that the polarities of these two small magnets are repelling each other, pushing them wider apart, but they are being attracted to the main magnet in there. This is what is going to help align these two magnets into that slot. And now comes the trickiest part of the reassembly. That is trying to put this entire assembly down into that completed assembly. The inner race of the bearing has to go around the pivot pin and these two magnets have to sit in that slot. Now I'm going to try and show it to you guys by bringing this part up. This might go wrong because I'm used to assembling it on a flat surface. But uh, what I wanted to show you guys was if you try to first align the bearing with the pivot pin. What's going to happen is that the two small magnets are still going to be attracted to the main magnet here and you won't be able to pull them further out into the two slots. What you want to try and do is you want to first align the two magnets into those two slots, then pull it slightly away because the attraction is still going to be there and slot the bearing into that pivot pin. So first is aligning the two magnets, just getting them to sit just like that. Press it down with my thumb and then slide this a little bit further up and pull it away towards the pivot pin and then we have everything reassembled just like that. Now when you have everything this way, that is when you want to grab the other half of the clamp area and just kind of make sure everything is aligned nicely, especially the two alignment pins and you want to clamp everything down together just like that. So this is it. And the last piece of the puzzle is to grab the other pivot screw then grab your T8 Torx bit and screw this down. Now, when you're tightening this thing, you don't have to go all the way tight. You can just tighten it all the way until the other half starts spinning like that. And then maybe apply some pressure uh, with your finger or a rubber band and tighten it just a bit, right? Till it's all good. And then now we have a reassembled, fully functioning Eclipse clicker. That's that. So I'm going to put all of this away now and focus the attention back here onto the Eclipse. So guys, like I said, the machining quality on this is just so amazing, guys. It is the main thing that blew me away. That, to me, was like... If I could give 10 chef's kisses to KAP and Umbari, I, I would. That's the real winner right there. The main attraction for me, I was just so amazed at this machining marvel. I think it's really, really cool. Apart from it being a very addictive clicker, because you guys can see once I have it in my hands, I'll just do nothing but start clicking away at it. But yeah, basically that is the allure and the beauty of the Eclipse clicker. Now let's go for a quick size comparison before we get to the last part of the video. And of course, I have to bring in the stubby, right? So let's look at this versus the stubby first of all. It is slightly larger than the stubby, slightly, slightly, very slightly taller. 
but of course it is a lot thicker than the stubby that is of course to be expected because this packs a lot in it but it is still very very pocketable when you compare it to the stubby right next let's bring in something a little bit more common which is what i usually bring in anyway an average size lighter as well as a victorinox classic sd a para 3 of course this particular para 3 is sporting a set of aramis purple dark matter carbon fiber scales let me just bring in one more item just in case it is a credit card sized card and i'll just put it right here so not too big at all guys not too big at all and right now you guys are probably wondering this thing made in titanium it's so fat isn't it going to be heavy am i going to be able to put this comfortably in my pocket and that is a great segue to the final part of the video which is all about the nitty gritty details of the eclipse clicker i almost wanted to say nitty gritty but it's nitty gritty to me i'm just used to saying it that way and to start off the final part of this video i will bring in the box that the eclipse clicker came in this is a very beautiful hard shell case guys you've even got a slot here where you could put a lanyard or clip in a small carabiner and you've got a clasp closure right here just flip this up open it up and it is lined with a very nice thin layer of foam that feels like felt so this thing comes really really well protected on top of that this was actually packed in a vacuum sealed plastic bag that is just next level protection guys and then of course you have a very cool metal by the way metal coa this metal piece is quite awesome on the back it basically shows you the kap logo and then you have the details of the product here eclipse serial number 20 material made in titanium bearing type r188 and it is signed so it kind of arrives kind of like that like that so now guys this is weighing in at a super super comfortable 38 grams guys 38 grams so you're not going to worry this thing's not going to weigh your pocket down it is not too large it is going to sit very comfortably the finishing is all done so well it's not going to snag on anything in your pocket it's not going to create any holes in your pocket it's not going to poke anything in your pocket this is just portable fun now the price point on this is also another surprising point this titanium version is coming in at just a hundred us dollars i was not expecting this to be a hundred us dollars guys let me just kind of reinforce what i'm saying okay i've seen a lot of clickers a lot of like haptic coins a lot of sliders and those are rather expensive especially when it comes to titanium now i was expecting this to be like what in the 150 to 200 dollar range because that usually is the kind of range that you would have to spend if you want to get a nice or a solid fidget clicker or a slider but this coming in at a hundred dollars that is really i i don't know how it how they're doing it i really don't know how they're doing it but this is a solid solid price point super compelling and the last thing i want to mention and you guys already should know this by now kap are no strangers to putting out their products in very beautiful exotic metals and by me saying that it means that the eclipse is also getting that treatment apart from being offered in titanium the eclipse is also available in both mokutai and zakutai guys oh my goodness yeah so you guys okay i'm gonna put pictures of those on screen because those are just absolutely beautiful but of course the price point is gonna be a bit more expensive as well the mokutai is gonna be coming in at the 249 dollar price range and the zakutai version is going at 479 dollars but of course that is to be expected because those are exotic metals and of course you have to factor in the fact that they are machined super well finished very very well and to top everything off both exotic offerings are flamed guys flamed so you're gonna get that beautiful beautiful color pop this is my very first kinetics asia pacific product that i'm actually showcasing here on the channel and i have to say that i am truly blown away and with all of that said we have come to the end of this video that is it everyone thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout and sharing in this slice of my life i hope that you enjoyed this video and if you're interested in getting yourself one of the eclipse clickers i hope that the information that i provided will help you make a better informed decision now of course if you're interested in getting one of these for yourselves make sure that you check out the description box down below i'll put links all there to the kap website as well as the product page if you've enjoyed this video so far a thumbs up would be nice and if you're new to the channel hello there a 
sub would be nice as well, but if I did not earn your sub today, that is okay. I promise I'll continue working on the quality of my content and hopefully one day I will earn that sub. Another great way to support the channel is over on Patreon. I'll put a link up here to that in case you want to check it out. We have Patreon exclusive content as well as Patreon exclusive giveaways from time to time. So if you do become a patron of mine, thank you so much in advance. Once again, everyone, this is the Eclipse Hand Clicker in Titanium made by KAP and Umbery. Thank you once again to KAP and to Haisia for putting this in my hands. And of course, that honorary shout out to Anna of Unquiet Hands for making this possible. And I'm going to end the video right now. I will catch all of you in my next slice. Stay tuned for that. Bye.